Hey friends and neighbors, welcome back. Uh, we get questions all the time about servicing and working on different type circuit breakers. Today we're going to look at servicing and doing some cleanup and some testing on the NW Series Master Pack. So hang out for just a little bit, we'll be right back. So let's go ahead and dig into this bad boy. We've got the cover screws. Most of you have been watching our videos, you know it's got five screws. We've got most of those loosened for the just for the sake of speed and time. So we're going to pop our front cover off. I see I've got them loosened. Loosen a little more. Take all your front screws out or loosen them out. Get it ready to go. We get asked questions all the time about different different breakers, different sizes. I made a joke earlier with one of the, one of the ladies here in the office talking about you know where the insulated case breaker came from. A lot of people, not that it really matters, but it kind of does. A lot of people get it mixed up and confused and say that's an air breaker or that's a moldy case breaker. Essentially you have a moldy case breaker, which is a plastic body breaker with a switch on and off. Then you had the you had the large air circuit breakers, which is an open air contact, which had a large beefy mechanism similar to the one inside of this. But then you have the insulated case breaker like this one. It's almost like the moldy case breaker and the air breaker had a baby, and it's an insulated case breaker. Reason being, plastic body, but still has a steel mechanical mechanism for operating the contacts open and close. So just a little bit of side note there for you. So let's set our cover to the side. We're gonna look at a couple of key maintenance points. I'm gonna go ahead. Most of you have seen the inside of these, the, the NW with your trip unit and your, your mechanism here, but let's go ahead and pull the arc chutes off the top. We'll get those, those are loosened up. Check them out. Those are loosened up and let's pull those out. Get those out of the way. And you'll wanna look inside of these as well. And make sure that there's no pitting arcing burning on these plates this is your arc quencher they used to call on air breakers or your arc chute this is where your suppression of any arcing place so from time to time they will get pitted up they'll get arced in them so what you'd want to do in the case if this one was nasty you'd want to brush it out clean it out with alcohol and contact cleaner make sure any loose or foreign debris was out where it wouldn't fall into the contact so that's very important so let's go ahead and get these bad boys out of here all right, there's your arc chutes. Of course, before they go back in, even if they're clean, you'll want to wipe them down, blow them out, clean any, any foreign debris, dirt, loose, loose product, get that out of the way. I don't know if you can see real good down in here, but you'll see that there's the moving contacts on the front side of the breaker, and then your other contacts in the back, your main co maintain contacts. What we want to do, of course, is we always want to do a visual inspection right down this row of contacts here. You can see those are very important. Those are very clean on this particular breaker, but you still want to get any surface dirt off of them. So we want to take a piece of scotch bright. I like it sometimes just some people cut it, some people tear it, whichever. You just need a small piece where you can get it down in between the moving and the maintain contact. So you would shine those up a little bit more. What that's going to do for this particular video, we're not going to do uh, high current testing. We're not going to do magging uh, for contact resistance and ductoring and all for the insulation. We're going to uh, go through and just do a service a PM just to give you service key points that things that are simpler to look for, easy to clean, but can extend the life of your equipment. I cannot tell you how many times we've been in plants and people say they've never cut something off and then they wonder why it won't turn back on. You've got to service your equipment, and sometimes it's the simple little things as far as cleaning dirt and debris and a little bit of lubrication. So, and that being said, if you're going to use lubrication, don't use just any. You'll want to use a, a certified, some people like Siemens grease, I don't. Some people like GE grease, I do. It's the red grease, it looks like blood. But it's just, it's been around, it stood the test of time. But it's a good uh, GE manufactured uh, or GE grease that someone else manufactured for them. But it's a good grease for lubrication and it's electrically safe so that's the key so clean all your contacts moving to maintain of course any loose debris get it out of there when we do this i don't want to put my head in the way but you really want to get a good visual inside the contact assembly just to make sure nothing's out of whack 
a big part of this is just a visual inspection. Looking down, seeing that there's no deep pits, no arcing, nothing out of order, nothing loose on the frame there on your main contact assembly. You can wiggle that by hand. You can see that it all travels together so nothing's out of a line. So that's for the moving contacts. This particular one has secondaries and controls, but unlike an air breaker, the air breaker actually has points or silver plated pins that you could clean on the breaker side. This particular one does not because they're encapsulated in plastic. So we'll go around to the next step and it's gonna be your primary disconnect fingers, which is gonna be this particular one is a draw out unit. So it will crank, you'll crank it into the substructure to mount it onto the bus. So these moving fingers right here, these will actually engage with the primary bus in the cubicle or the cell. So what I like to do, get a little bit of alcohol. Got a little canister here to keep it in. Basically, you're gonna clean in between. There's a lot of, speaking of GE grease, see the red, how heavy it's caked on there? You don't have to put it on that heavy. A thin film is all that you need as you do this. When you, re you clean it, of course, you're going to want to reapply it, but you do not have to cake it up like cake batter. It's not a cupcake. You don't want to coat it and cover it up, but you do want to clean all that old out. Because think about it, if you're caking and filling it up with grease thinking you're doing something great, you're making a wonderful place for dirt and dust to collect very quickly. So it's the main reason I don't put a lot of extra grease. I do reapply a thin layer. I'll show you that in a minute. We can get them all cleaned up. I'll do this next phase here and show you the difference. You can see how that one's a little more silver. Again, I would hit that with Scotch Bright just to show you the difference because this is a movable fixture where it goes into the stab inside the inside the substructure. You want to make sure that it's clean it could become a hot, a hot spot if not addressed during maintenance. So I'll show you on this one right here. Now see how that's coming clean? You know that there's nothing there, then you would go back over that for any fiber and clean that off with the alcohol. You'd floss between that. You'd make sure that that's all clean. You would repeat that process on each one of these all the way across A, B, and C phase. Let me show you that grease real quick. We like to get it in five gallon buckets, but we, we bought it in a handy dandy cappuccino can. But what you do is basically you can do it with your finger, you can do it with a brush, but you put a thin film on there. You can see it going on, but then you wipe the excess. See, a lot of people like to put it on their goblet on there like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Put a thin layer and then clean that excess off. Rub it in. That way you know you've got it on there when it comes time for this to insert into the cell and go onto the main bus. Again, if you coat this with too much grease, then you're going to uh, create just a point for all your dirt and dust to collect. And you're just creating a maintenance problem. So we do that again. We go all the way across each one of these, as I said. Some people disagree, but I like to put a very thin, thin coat on the moving contact surface tip only. Uh, just to give it just a little bit there on the surface. Again, it is an electrically uh, safe grease. That's what it's for. For all your primary contacts, your main moving contacts, and your maintained contacts. So just again, a thin coat, put that on there. Now, I'm gonna spin it around. You can see the mechanism. Hopefully you'll be able to see inside there. It's a little difficult. But in the front of the operator mech, even if it was a, this is not an air breaker, but the operating mechanism, this is the stored energy portion right here. In behind here is where all the magic happens. This is where you, you charge and preload your closing spring to close your contacts. What I like to do is right in behind here, and you're able to, I'm gonna take that apart. Easiest way to do it, contact cleaner. If you can't get down into it, but there's a prop latch. It's a little bitty roller right in behind this guard. It's just a little roller guide. Clean the excess grease out of it. Don't get crazy with it. Reach in there, spin that little roller by hand. 
right in behind this little view window right here. That little prop latch, when you get all the way to the top of your stored energy stroke with your, your mechanism, that prop latch has to seat. So if it ever gets gummy or seized up with too much grease and dirt, it will not seat, which means the breaker will not close. So something to be mindful of. Then I like to take and again, put a little bit of my grease and just barely lightly put it on the roller. Once you do that, you just spin the roller a little bit. Get your nail with your hand, make sure you've got plenty of free travel. You would always make sure that this is discharged, of course, don't run your finger in here. You know, don't be that guy. Because it, it hurts, I knew that guy. Worked with him, no names. But, so that's a quick, simple, few maintenance points. Obviously, after I did all of this, if we were doing, like say, in a, in a outage on site, we would take and we would pull each breaker. We would then do a high current test. We'd reassemble everything, do a high current testing. We would do a mega testing. That would be for the integrity of the insulation. And then we would do the, uh, the ductor or the contact resistance. So those are just quick, easy, but sometimes, not for the sake of easy, but sometimes the easier things get overlooked. And then over 10, 20 years, you have equipment that will not reclose because it's seized or gone. So we'll talk uh, in the future. We're going to look into some bolt lock issues we've been seeing a lot of, and that typically is lack of service. So hope this helps. And uh, if there's anything we can do and help you down the road, give us a call. Thank you so much. And God bless.